if you all think that that specimen that the hospital has has anything similar to what is in the stomachs of those people, you are wrong. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. Okay, today's show, we're going to do two things. We're going to do a little bit of true crime follow-up on the Australian poisoner, mother of two. There was a program on Channel 9 in Australia called Under Investigation with Liz Hayes. It was a great program, mostly because we came to the same conclusion. If you looked at my last video, I had an analysis of the whole situation. I don't know, something kind of tells me that they watch my video. I mean, I'd like to think they'd watch my video. I think they have interns, right? That they are like, interns, snap, snap, go on the interwebs, go look at some YouTube channels and figure out what the temperature is, what people are thinking, what people are asking. Bring me a brief and we'll just use some of that in the show. Because some of the things they said in there are word for word what I said. What the heck is this skinny guy with a funny last name and what the heck is he doing in the middle of this debate stage? The hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him too. She copies me like, bro, the girl copies me in 2020 and you've done it in 2022 after I've done it. Like, Chelsea, come on now. You bought the same jacket as the girl. Chelsea, come on now. Yeah, you bought the same outfit as the girl. Chelsea, come on now. But it could also be that we just came to the same conclusions because of the evidence presented, you know what I mean? Like, and then after that, we're going to cover at the end my own investigation that I did into the Sussex Squad. I have proof that the Sussex Squad is comprised of paid actors and trolls. And they bot farm them, so they get a lot of traction. And I finally have proof of that to show you today. So let's get into it. Okay, first of all, let's get into the under investigation mushroom lady thing. And actually in my comments, I saw a lot of people saying, Leilani, why are you laughing about the victims? You should have more sensitivity towards the victims. I like the comedy and stuff, but I mean, not in this case. Girl, bye. The police should have more sensitivity towards the victims. The police should be seeking justice for the victims. That's their job. So if they are not arresting this obvious criminal who poisoned four people, then why should I be oh so careful about everything? Even up to this program, they're not sure if Aaron Patterson is a person of interest or a suspect. They go back and forth between the two terms, which is very confusing. In any case, she's free. By the way, did you know which they did not mention in the program, that she withdrew all of her savings from an ATM machine. If that's not a flight risk, I don't know what is. How is she not detained? But anyway, that panel, I loved it. It was private investigators. It was toxicologists. It was mixologists at the bar, your local bar. No, no, no just kidding. But it was like all kinds of different people and they were all equally intrigued and surprised by Aaron Patterson and what is really going on here. First of all, they start out by telling us a little bit about the process you go through if you're poisoned by these mushrooms. It seems to be a horrible experience. First, you feel sick. Then you go through a honeymoon period where you think you're better and you're recovering. Like you think you had like a stomach bug or maybe like a, just a regular food poisoning. And then it hits you again. And because it's such a toxic cycle that even if you excrete the mushrooms, the toxins still remain in your body and they still begin working on shutting down your organs, in particular your liver. And it starts to dissolve it. Oh, really important at the top of this, I want to say what we didn't know about the reconciliation is that Erin Patterson was trying to have a reconciliation, not with her in-laws, but with her ex-husband. And the in-laws didn't want the reconciliation. That's why she was trying to charm them at this lunch. And they probably thought, let's humor this girl. We, we, you know we don't like that girl, okay? But we're just gonna come to this lunch and eat her food. The least we can do for her. They probably thought they were doing her a favor because she's trying to ingratiate herself to them and say, please like me, please let me get back together with your son. Isn't that crazy? But as we say in Barbados, when you plan it for somebody, they plan it for you. You get me? So they thought they were going to come there, <laughs> just humor her. And she was like, I got you. I got you planned for. They go to her house and they eat the mushrooms. And we know what happened after that. Three of them are in hospital. One of them still fighting for his life. This is interesting too, though, because as I said in my last video, please go and watch my last video, but the pastor who is fighting for his life in hospital, she keeps mentioning him, Aaron Patterson, like when she was outside her car getting interviewed all the time, she keeps dwelling on him, fighting for his life. Devastated by what's happened, by the loss of Don, and, Don is still in hospital, the loss of Ian and Heather. The pastor's name is Ian Wilkinson, but she can't seem to get that right. 
as she insists Donnie is still fighting for his life, meaning Don Patterson, her father-in-law, who has already passed away. What do you make of that? Comment down below. And I think perhaps the reason why the police haven't detained her this is my take they did not mention this in the program but if anybody in mainstream media mentions this i know it came from me <laughs> my take is that the police are probably waiting for him to see if he recovers because that would be really great if they could get a statement from him saying what happened he probably will say something like right before i ate the mushrooms she was like i got you the pastor is probably gonna say she looked at me in my eyes and told me this will be the last meal you ever eat deuces i'm just saying that might be the reason why the police are waiting this investigator has said that everything's gonna be top tier they're gonna call in international blah 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 it's, it's all gonna be handled really really well it might take a very long time is what they're saying they kept going on and on about how well this investigation is going to be handled because i don't think that they want australia to be like the death cat mushroom tourism destination you know like how they have medical tourism people go to countries to get medical treatment and whatever i don't think australia wants to be the in-laws destination like where you just pack all your in-laws up on a family reconciliation tour i don't think they want the international audience to think that you can just come to australia and kill off your relatives and walk free so they are insisting that no stone where a mushroom might be under <laughs> will be left unturned and i think that's that's very important because right now it looks like you can just go there and get her red jeep and just jump in and out of it and drive around and get your bags and get your stuff out the trunk and just keep living and like call your dogs in and you've just killed three people but you can just live like that i don't think australia wants that reputation and i don't think they should get it so i'm sure they're going to do their due diligence to make sure that they don't get that reputation in any case, after what happened to Pergosa, and everyone knows that poisoning is so last season, honey. Can Aaron Patterson do that? <laughs> okay, so finally we start talking about Aaron Patterson and everybody gives their take on her. They are asking the panel what they think of her. In other words, what they want to say so I'll say it for them, is that she looked really fake. There was no tears. There was a, what, what do you guys think about that? And the police investigator basically says that in his line of work, they base things on facts and not feelings. So it doesn't really matter what you think of her performance. It doesn't really matter. They're only dealing with the facts. And <laughs> uh, Liz Hayes kind of pushes him and says, So you can't be swayed by she seems so terribly upset as much as you can't be swayed by... Is she really upset? Well, you know, if you've got three people that... <laughs> Much as you can't be swayed by, is she really upset? So before we get into all the things that were similar between my video and this show, let's talk about some new things and some things that they didn't address. I really want to talk about. First of all, another new thing is that for some reason, Erin told the police that the guests chose their portions. And I don't know why she thinks that's significant. Maybe she thinks like they chose to unalive themselves by choosing their portions. You know what I mean? I didn't cut it for them. Like she exonerates herself by saying that they themselves cut their portions and ate it. But that's something that I didn't hear about before. So I find that very psychotic of her to think that's important. After she cooked the poison and invited them to come and eat it. Girl, bye. They talk about the dehydration machine. As I said before, was interesting because why did she throw it away? They say the same exact words I said. I think she threw it out because it would have had remnants of the mushrooms that she dehydrated in there. So you would expect that perhaps there might be some remnants of the mushrooms in the dehydrator. There is a bit of discrepancy when it comes to her taking the dehydration machine to the dump. When her husband said, is that what you use to poison them? That conversation actually took place in the hospital when she took her children to the hospital pretending that they were sick too, which they weren't, after the poisoning. But the people at the dump say that she dropped off the dehydration machine the morning of the luncheon. There's another discrepancy there. She's still not coming completely clean about it. The dump does have CCTV, so they're going to go back and look and see when she could have dumped it and exactly what she dumped because they're saying that she actually dumped more than just the dehydration machine. She also dumped microwave trays and other utensils. They have a micrologist who's German. She also says that the dehydration machine was useful in preserving the mushrooms, which is the same thing I said. I think she might have dehydrated it just to like keep it longer. Instead of it getting 
going bad, she probably dehydrated so she could keep it and continue to work with the product, if you know what I mean. Drying mushrooms is, is used very widely for preservation. It's a very obvious conclusion to come to. I'm not saying she's, you know, plagiarizing or anything, but girl, did you watch my video or not? Another thing that was revealed here was that Erin Patterson, who is smarter than the average bear in her mind, handed the hospital a sample of the beef wellington. I'm just going to throw this out here. I think she made two different beef wellingtons, to be honest. I think that she probably did eat beef wellington as well to make sure that they thought that she was eating the same thing as them because it would have been very bloody strange if she sat down and just didn't eat the same thing as them. So they're saying that they hope that this hospital still has this specimen and that they are able to test it. If you all think that that specimen that the hospital has has anything similar to what is in the stomachs of those people, you're wrong, okay? Why would she do that? Another thing they didn't touch on, which I thought they would have, was that one year ago, Erin Patterson sold her house and on one of the walls of the house when the painter went in to refresh it before it was purchased was this drawing. He obviously found it very disturbing because it is and he took a picture of it. He says that Erin Patterson told him that her children did it when she was out one day and came home to find it. And now I'm not a psychiatrist or forensics pathologist or whatever but when I look at this painting I don't see that it was done by a child. I think it was done by somebody who's not artistically talented of course because the drawings are quite crude but I see from the writing that it's an adult that did this painting. I don't know why she tried to play it off like it was her kids even if it was I think that it would have been something worth investigating and that the painter could have actually reported that. She's basically mapping out a plan of killing people, literally her in-laws and also herself in there. It, it, it's, it's very, very disturbing. And I thought they would have brought it up in this program, but they didn't. But I think at the end of the day, yeah, I think we came to the same conclusions. I think we still have the same questions. And uh, I really am going to watch this story very carefully because I am intrigued by it, you know? <laughs> Now, let us get to my under investigation report that I have. Here's an example of one of these TikTokers that's a Megan Sugar that is very suspicious to me. There's something about it that seems, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well with me. Let's have a look. Please don't mind the no makeup, the headband, the everything. I have just had the mother of bad Thursdays. No one cares. But I did log on for my little pre-bedtime strolling ritual to see that these two were out and about for a little pre-birthday dinner for Megan. She turns 42 years old tomorrow, Friday. And you know, Sussex appearances come in batches. We got their video for the Responsible Tech Grant Awards. Which was a con artist fraud. On Wednesday, a paparazzi sighting on Thursday. And I know some of you are gonna try it. I don't think Megan calls them on herself. You don't. I think we would have proof of- We have proof of that. We literally have proof of that if it was happening because people love to have a gotcha moment for this woman. No, I think she just lives her life Girl. and when she goes out in public, it's in California where a lot of celebrities live. Anyway, I would not wear yeah. this dress. It would look terrible, I think, on Do like 99% of the population. But I just love it on Megan. I love her style and how she carries herself within that style. And dare I say, it's giving like elevated Barbie girl summer. Most people took Barbie girl summer to mean pink. And you know, we did get a little of that from Megan, but this was in April when she and Harry went to the Lakers game and she wore this pink suit. I don't know. I do think that this might be a little bit of referencing going on. This dress, by the way, is only $240. It's by the brand Posse. It's available for pre-order right now. I have a link to it on my stories on Instagram. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, she has a link to it on her stories on Instagram. Is she selling it? This is a merch plug for Megan. All of this is so absurdly scripted. Let me just let you finish this because I'm going to I'm going to drop a bomb in a minute. But this dress having like a relatively accessible price point is also very interesting to me because there are rumors that Megan is going to relaunch her Instagram tomorrow on her 42nd birthday. Now, these rumors that well, she didn't relaunch it. She's bringing back the tag that she's getting back on Instagram have been around for a while now. I've never really set much store by them, but this one is getting picked up and spread far and wide. I think even page 6 yeah. is reporting it at the 
Bye. People are claiming that this is her new account. The handle is just Megan. And if you go into the about this account, yeah, that's the same one I showed you guys. Count section of this page, it tells you that it was made in June of 2022. So I think the thinking here, the reasoning is who would claim this handle and ostensibly pay money to get it, but then just sit on it. I will leave it up to you. I mean, An a-hole would do that. Like Megan, she would just claim it and sit on it. If it's not her, we can unfollow, it's fine. But I'm intrigued. If it's not her, we can unfollow. Girl, why are you telling people what to do? Let me tell you something. This is a paid bot. Uh, but you can see that even from this conversation, she has affiliate links. I, I am seated for sure. Also, I'm seated to see if the royal family decides to wish Megan a happy birthday tomorrow. So many questions. Let me know your thoughts. Is this Megan's renaissance era? I don't know. We'll see tomorrow. But how do you know that she's like interested in being a bot in the first place? Well, I found something. Very interesting. Jay Shetty does a lot of inspirational skits and he pays very low budget actors who would never make it in acting ever to do these skits about situations and he tries to teach people. And I was watching Jay Shetty stuff and I find this face and I was like, that girl looks very familiar. She's a paid actress on Jay Shetty's skits. Which means she's in that pool of people who want to be famous and can't get famous by just their personality or their shtick or whatever. She's a hard watch, okay? I'm going to put it that way. And it's a perfect target for somebody like Megan, who's going to be like, who can we pay? Who is so desperate for followers and fame? And this girl is a perfect target. There are more of them. I just happen to recognize her face, but I am going to go on a deep dive and I'm going to uncover all of the Sussex troll bots paid for people that Megan is getting to come on here and promote her and talk about nobody else can wear what she wears and nobody else can look as good as she looks. She's a con artist and I'm going to go on a deep dive of that and why she is going to get cancelled in Hollywood and she will never work again. And I'm going to show you all the reasons why in my next video, which is coming up that I am preparing for you. And so that is my under investigation report tonight. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching me and please stay tuned. Oh, Please tell me if you're interested in me doing another true crime thing. I have a true crime, ongoing crime that's lined up, has to do with the Caribbean. And I think I can give you the Caribbean perspective on it. True crime Caribbean edition, girl. Let's go. So let me know if you want me to do that one. It's a very interesting one and it is ongoing. Speaking of the Caribbean, you have one week left to purchase my slippers. The sale is lasting until the 31st of August. Link is in the description to the website. Lots of love to you. I love you so much. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Please subscribe to Valentine's Playroom. It's my son's children channel. So if you have any bambinos around who might enjoy adventures with an island boy, share his channel with them, please. Thank you.